Hello folks, it's Barry here. Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. Today is our second video in Apple Month. We've already had those gorgeous rose apple pies, which you guys are making and loving and sending me pictures and I'm drooling on my phone. They're just remarkably good. I really hope you do give them a go if you haven't already. Today, I fancy doing something a bit savory. And this is 100% true. Last night, I guess it's like doing like the whole online food life, I dreamt of making a pork and apple recipe video today. Uh, but I went in the supermarket and switched it up last minute to chicken. This is a sticky, tangy apple cider chicken. It is so moist, so tender. It's served alongside with some asparagus and sweet potato wedges. I really hope you give this a go. If you'd like to try it, uh, hit pause on the video now. Write down all these ingredients. They're also in the description box down below or on my website if you're on there as well. Yeah. So before we get started, I want to say a big shout out to this person right here that on the giant hoverboard video said, Barry, I've got this idea. Why don't you do the opposite of giant food? I've already been doing that for the last year at least. It's called mini food, mate. Please check it out good times. First thing we're going to do is actually work on our side dish, the sweet potato wedges, because they take the longest. We're going to put in a roasting tray all our sweet potato wedges, uh, nice even chunks, give them a good old coating in oil and season them in pepper and salt and get your hands in there, get it all nice and coated and shove it in your oven for a good 25 minutes and then taste once they're out really good. Mm. Yes, I would love to just stand around and eat sweet potato wedges all day, but we need to crack on and make the rest. So we're gonna make a baste and a rub. First up, we'll make the baste. All of the baste ingredients simply go into this jug. So chuck them all in there, give them a darn good stir together. It might look disgusting, but I promise you, it is actually really, really good. And you might think it's too much vinegar in there, and you could adjust that, but it's a nice tang. Pour that into a saucepan, bring it up to a simmer, and meanwhile, while that is coming to a simmer, we make our rub. So for this rub then, it's kind of like the baste method, except we're using a bowl instead of a jug. We're simply dumping all of those ingredients together into the bowl and then mixing it together with a wooden spoon until fully coated. Now to make sure our chicken cooks fully through and a little faster, uh, what I did was get one of those Ziploc bags and gave them a little bashing uh, with the chicken. <laughs> I didn't bash it with the chicken, I bashed it with a rolling pin. You don't bash chicken with chicken, that would be a bit, almost like wrestling. Could be a new sport. Yes, so you bash your chicken until it's nice and thin, then add your rub into that freezer bag too, and give it a good old shake and mix together until it's fully coated. I actually added a little bit of oil on there as well and added that to the bag to help grip it too. Got it all coated on there, and then it's time to simply cook it up. Grab yourself a griddle pan over a low flame. We're gonna do it really low so that chicken gets as much cooking time as possible. Place those rubbed chicken breasts all down there and start to cook away. And what we're gonna do is baste it in that simmered apple vinegar as we go along. Just keep coating it as much as you can. Just get it all on there. It looks real nice and shiny, real good color on there. And as it starts to caramelize as well, all that baste will start to come off. You need to keep topping it up as well. So get your brush in there, working it all along. After around about six and a half, minutes, turn it over and repeat it for the same amount of time, cooking it in the same style, giving it a good old brush and coating. It's looking so, so good. And just to one side while I did that, nice and easy, I had some asparagus in a pan cooking away in butter. So get it all nice and basted and believe it or not, with your wedges done, the asparagus done and your chicken done, it's ready to serve. When we serve it up on our plate with those wedges and the asparagus already there, place the chicken down, give it an extra little bit of base to liven up again. This is completely optional, but you can add some fresh parsley on there and a little grinding of more pepper. What I really liked was when I cut into it, it was so juicy and tender. You can use some of that leftover sauce you've got as a dunking pot, and this was an R. Kelly moment. I was having an R. Kelly moment in the kitchen. I did capture it, but got a bit embarrassed, sorry. It's really as easy as that, guys. It's done in under half an hour. And remember, I'm self-taught, so if I can make it, you definitely can. If you do try it, send me some pictures at My Virgin Kitchen on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to me if you haven't already. Check out my last two videos and let me know uh, down below uh, anything, any recipes you want to see next, and I'll give them a go when I can. All right, see you next time.